little background. I I like uh, finding natural foods, being concerned about uh, the foods I eat, and you can buy them at the health food store, but they're probably 40 to 50 percent higher priced than the the I hate to say normal foods, but the the chemically factory pre created foods that you'll find at the regular grocery stores. So. One way to, uh, it, it's funny, the natural foods movement grew up out of people who were really concerned about their foods and they were out of the mainstream, they couldn't get the products in stores, so they actually had to form their own enterprises. <coughs> they formed food co-ops. Um, I joined my first one in Austin, Texas in about 1971 or so, and uh, I didn't quite understand the, how the thing worked, I just wanted to buy the natural foods. But co-ops are another kind of libertarian, mutualist kind of uh, creation that um, evolved in the mid-1800s. And it's hard for us to remember this, but a lot of people were just essentially rising out of feudalism and the aristocracy that kind of owned everything before kind of continued to own everything in the factory system and everything. And people who wanted to um, get free of that sometimes had to form their own enterprises and they didn't even have any capital to start with. So they formed cooperatives, mutual banks, mutual insurance companies, um, what were the other, uh, credit unions. Credit union is just a co-op to handle money as the product. So the whole mutualism movement that began back then included cooperatives. Um, you'll, you'll see a lot of times cooperatives that are um, revolving around agriculture. You know, the, uh, I grew up in uh, Texas and they had cooperative cotton gins. So they had all these cotton farmers and they pooled their money to buy the equipment to process the cotton. So that was a co-op. Um, uh, farmers would go in together to po pool their money to build a grain elevator to store their grain. Uh, I don't have the details of all how all those work. I'm more in, um, used to urban co-ops. So just a little bit of background and I'll, I'll turn it over to Jessica. And by the way, we're all co-op members and we're co-op consumers. Um, the two main kinds of cooperatives are producer cooperatives and consumer cooperatives. So farmers are producers in that sense. Um, we have a consumer cooperative that we want to grow to be, well, I guess it's already starting to be one for producers and consumers. So when you think of it, when you have producers and consumers, you've got a market. You have the products being made, and the products being used, and the buyers and sellers getting together. So our goal is to create a place starting within our movement, but gradually growing outside of it to include others, to be able to market all the things we make through our co-op channels, and being able to consume all the things we need through our co-op channels, so keeping the, the businesses within our community, with the co-op kind of acting as a clearinghouse. That's, that's kind of the main thing about it, so we'll get into it. We'll have a time for question and answers later, but let me pass it on to Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. We're really excited to see you all here. Uh, we're just having a little debate over who all should be up here. Um, we, the, the reasons that we're up here is because we all have uh, tasks here in the co-op, and so I'm Jessica Love on Facebook, and they call me the marketing director. And this is John, and he does um, the ordering through one of our um, suppliers, and Daniel is our treasurer. Um, what I wanted to talk about today was how um, the idea of the Shire Co-op came about in 2008 from the OG master here uh, of All Expo. And um, for many years it was talked about, and for... I've been here for three years, and it doesn't seem like three years ago that there was even enough people here then to really have anything going with an idea like this. And so I signed up about nine months ago and started making the event pages for Facebook and promoting those and, and whatnot. And now it seems like we actually have something going. So um, right now what we're doing, the mission really is about a bigger picture. You know, it seems like even the people that I see in my neighborhood, in the, in the projects, and I live at the Quill, the community center, a lot of porcupines there, they think that it is really just about like people who want to eat paleo or just want to save some money on their groceries, and that's great, and you can definitely do that. But um, we're really working hard towards a bigger picture here, and so the mission is more about like 
having this scene that we have here at Porkfest, the Agra Valley, Agra Alley, and how like everybody gears up for the year to bring their stuff to the market, to market here, but like there's enough people here that we should have a marketplace to be doing this all the time, like a venue and, or a platform to um, buy, sell, and trade amongst ourselves, you know, and, and start to gain some independence off of the mainstream uh, system and the dependence on the major corporations. So what we did um, was we started, well, Jack did, this is long before me, um, started a, a contract, business, uh, business contract with Associated Buyers, which is a wholesale distributor of health foods. And so through the power of collective purchasing, we can get the stuff that you'll find at your health food stores that's quite expensive for, uh, you know, 30, 40, 50% off. And um, so that's going well. And that just really gets everybody working together. And if you're not, like, close enough to Manchester to maybe be a part of this, you can take the information back to wherever you are and try to start something like this in your area. Um, so you get everybody working together, and we're all putting money together and placing big wholesale orders to this place, right? And everybody's working together. And then we have a community market day where we uh, bring out all of our stuff that we make at home. Like I bring my Bulletproof coffee out and serve it at the event. Daniel cooks hot food and serves it. So it's kind of like a market day party, you know, a little bit. Um, we have people that make jewelry. Um, we have Jennifer and Darlene over here that make awesome grass-fed tallow soaps and body balms. And um, we have people, uh, Amy's brought some like ceramic bowls out. Um, we have uh, people that bring their yard sale stuff, stuff that's in their house that they want to get rid of. Just like have a place to market this stuff. And so you get everybody working together and then now we have people that have gardens in their house that have too much of this or too much of that. What am I supposed to do with all this broccoli? So they bring it to share, sell, buy, trade, buy, sell, trade. Um, so, and this is all in place of having a co-op, like brick and mortar store. So I guess it was resolved very early on that there would be no store. You know, paying rent and insurance and utilities just is a overhead cost that you have to recover somehow, so that adds to the price to the consumers for everything they buy. Right, exactly. So, um, and it's really, I think that if, I, if I'm not mistaken, that the goal is more about having just something to connect all of our businesses, what we can produce with the people that need what we produce. And so to actually like sell the health food store, I mean, that would be great, I think, but it, I don't think that's really like the deeper meaning of what we're doing here. So anyways, um, so the marketplace is going great. We um, are looking forward to having a space at Area 23 in Manchester or in the Manchester area actually, which uh, should be bigger than where we're at now. But. Um, we also, last month, because of the growing season here, we now have produce coming in, which was huge. There was a lot of people that were like waiting to join because they really wanted produce, and so produce is really important. There's a couple of things that we could really use if any of y'all are near Manchester. Um, local honey, number one, local honey, and there was some beekeeping classes here this, this week, so um, if anyone's interested in that, we always sell out of the eggs so people that can have chickens and more produce probably and like other meat like chickens would be great too I think and um, something exciting also that we're taking on here is that now that we have the market day going every month um, Bardo Farm is only about an hour and a half away and um, they're going to be bringing their products down to the market day in Manchester and selling their syrups and their eggs and their meats and stuff like that. We have several co-op members that are actually members of the Bardo Farm CSA. So this is what I think we're really trying to get to here is like linking up with the other free staters and porcupines that have um, farms and that have something to market like that. And so we also have a relationship with another local farm. We've got some butter from and some other co-op members have ordered from them. It's called Brookford Farm. Um, but Bardo Farm is like within our community and then we also have uh, the lady that's bringing produce from her farm is I don't think she's a pork or a free stater but she's liberty friendly and so 
the closer to home the better but yeah like growing to include everybody is definitely huge um, and I think this is important because like I said in the beginning that there's a lot of people people here now so that we can actually do something like this and I think that all expo addressed the question of like we're all here now what do we do and the project to community segments earlier on this week and so um, like the question is now how do we build this voluntary society that we're all interested in building and you know that's not really on the FSP agenda agenda that's just to get the people here so what do we do now well I think that it's really there's a lot of basis in it in the free market like if we can just get all of that commerce going and include it in ourselves and then like I think it the implications of having a co-op where everybody in our movement and our community has a venue to sell their stuff and to buy the stuff that they need um, is going to really make a big difference on actually doing something with all the people that are here. So um, we have a Facebook page. It's the Shire, it's Shire Co-op. That's the open Facebook page. Um, the All Expo site is up at 118. And um, I have some business cards if anyone is close enough to Manchester to where they could possibly be involved and participate in this. And um, I wanted to, um, it looks like John has a few things to say written down over there. Uh, well, you've got some notes, so, you know, I'm going to have to call you out on that. It says Shire Co-op Talk, is that what I see? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but, and then I would like to just, like, introduce some of the members that are here in the audience and they can say, like, why they joined and, and what they, how they participate. Um, do you have anything to say? Okay. Hello. Jessica Love has done an amazing job, by the way, getting not only not only in getting new members, but also in bringing together more producers. I think when we first started, we had one distributor, Associated Buyers, and they're great. They supply a lot of health food stores in New Hampshire, they're local to New Hampshire. Uh, I buy a lot of canned food from them, suits, annual suits, 20% off. And that's kind of what brought me to the co-op. I took over as this role as coordinator in December, and I think since then we've been able to add three or four farms, local farms, uh, Kendra Farms, Hartford Farms, and also people in their backyards, like she mentioned, just growing food, uh, Maybe they have chickens, so they bring their fresh chemical food, eggs, and it's great. Um, how many people here are within an hour of Manchester, New Hampshire, living in that area? Okay. All the co-op members. All the co-op members. Great. <laughs> well, for those who are not here, you can always move here. That's what the FSP is for. But if you can't, you can always start your own co-ops locally where you are, and you can build the same exact thing from the grassroots up. Uh, it's pretty easy to just find a distributor that you like. And for us, it's $500 minimum, each one of the members is a buyer's club. And if you can reach that each month, make an order, they need to deliver it to you. And that's how you start to build that, that co-op. Uh, Dan, do you have anything to say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, first of all, I've been a uh, treasurer since February. And uh, thanks for bringing in those two or three farms, Jessica. I think uh, now my uh, accounting job is much harder. Um, <laughs> the thing I, I uh, well, I originally joined this uh, co-op because uh, well, I like hemp products, and hemp is expensive because you have to. The hemp itself has to be imported from the from uh, any you know. Well, the major supplier is Canada, but from outside of the United States, and uh, so which makes hemp products more expensive. And so I can get a good price on things like hemp seed oil and hemp butter. And uh, the other reason that I joined was because, well, it exists. When I first moved here uh, to Manchester four and a half years ago from New York City, 
I was excited because I had belonged to the Flatbush Co-op in Brooklyn, New York. And I was excited that, oh wow, there's a Manchester Food Co-op. And so I went to the website. I looked for an address. There was no address. The store doesn't exist. The place doesn't exist. Basically, they're waiting to collect 10,000 members. And guess what? Four and a half years later, they still don't exist. They're waiting to get 10,000 members before they open up. And which is how a lot of co-ops operate. And the reason that they do that, the reason why they need that, that, that threshold of members is so that they can collect the dues, that, you know, 10,000 dues. And have enough money. And why do they need enough money to start up? Licenses and permits and regulations, it costs money to be in compliance with the law. It costs money to file all these permits and hire someone to do the paperwork. You know, oftentimes for even for a nonprofit, you need a lawyer, you need an accountant. You know, you need a CPA, you need a licensed lawyer to look over all that stuff. And guess what? They still don't exist. This Shire Co-op is completely at risk. We, you know, we didn't wait uh, until we had this much startup money or that, upstart, that much startup money. We figured all we need is for the members to, play, to put down the money to place their orders for the things they want. And then we get those things. The end result is that we've been functioning for about, about three or four years, and the other co-op hasn't. And I, uh, I am an agorist. I practice agorism on a daily basis. I fully believe in it. And the fact that this, this is an agorist em enterprise, uh, just sweeten the pot for me. And, you know, slowly we're creating a voluntary network of producers and consumers. I would say that half of our membership consists of vendors, and uh, these are all agorist vendors. And, well, yeah, more or less. And, um, and, and as Jack uh, spoke about the overhead, the overhead is an important uh, issue because we want to keep the overhead as low as possible so that we don't have to pass any markup on to our members so that our members can in fact get the lowest prices and we don't have a storefront but we meet and we're allowed to you know we, we can place our orders we, we get our suppliers have catalogs or if it's a small farm Jessica will, will ask them what they have and we'll relay it I would say Jessica is almost like a personal shopper for some of the co-op members and she is amazing um, but yeah, I, you know, I love the fact that this is an agorist enterprise, and one of the cool things is that even if you don't live in New Hampshire, this is completely open source. You can start your own, um, you know, just start your own voluntary network of consumers and suppliers. You find a farm, you find a supplier. Uh, our main supplier, Associated Buyers, is not agorist. But they do business with us anyway. I mean, they're getting they're getting paid. So, uh, yeah. But I love that we're able to have a voluntary network. And uh, did I mention I love agorism? I'm gonna give the mic back to. Yeah, so it's interesting, like I me mentioned the uh, lady with the farm that was looking for a place to sell her produce. Um, she's like a liberty friendly, but wasn't like one of us. And um, she came to the first market day with her produce. And so many people asked if they could pay with Bitcoin, but now she's got to get Bitcoin. So it, I think it's working. And so um, I'm just going to have a couple of the members that are here just say why they joined the co-op and what they like about it or how they use it, whatever they feel. Hi, I'm Jeff and I've joined the co-op uh, a few months ago. I moved to Manchester in December and uh, it was it's right next door to me, the uh, kind of the headquarters of it. So it was a pretty easy decision to join. Uh, I've been mostly benefiting just from the fact that we are that we have we get bulk rates for a lot of things and so that's been fun. Um, I also appreciate the um, the community aspect of it where we do get together uh, a couple times a month. To, uh, to talk about the co-op and what we want to do with it and also to, uh, to do that market day where we buy and sell amongst each other. 
with uh, with Bitcoin usually. So yeah, that's me. Oh, sorry, I'm not a, a member. Yeah, I have a question after that. I'm a member. And huh. the secretary. Oh, that's right. I actually do a job with the Shire Call. I'm the secretary. I go to the meetings, the monthly, we have a, mi mi a business meeting once a month, and I take the minutes, and we produce those, and so those are all available to all the members who can see. We didn't talk about what membership uh, fees were like and how we do that. Um, things are evolving. What's really cool, I've been with this, uh, I think in the room, We've got Jack and me. Uh, we're here back in the times when we were just talking about what the that what what would we do as a chorus and uh, what can we see? What 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 do we need? What do we want? And this part where we can we can um, have the consumers and the suppliers get together locally within the Shire, and we can we're not relying on the system to be getting our stuff. We're we're dealing with the people who who produce and and the people and. It's the natural, well, you can produce anything you wanted, I guess. But uh, many of us were thinking about the natural food, the organic food, and being able to get uh, get that. So I'm very excited um, about the part that there are so many more producers. And there's going to be way more producers, because that's what we all do, is we all produce. So I'm not seeing it limited to food. I see it expanding into other things. Whatever your, Whatever you do and that I want, I want to know you, and I want to know you through the Shire Co-op. And it's just, um, that's it. That's why I joined, was to be able to be part of uh, part of seeing that thing grow. And I think we would all agree up here, there is so much room to grow in this organization, and it is very cool that even though it's small at the moment, it's really fulfilling the needs that we have. It's a really a grassroots organization through and through, and I love that aspect that we can do it. There's no centralized thing telling us this is how you set it up. There's no hierarchy per se. So it's all working out according to plan. Okay, great. Uh, question. Oh, another oh, member. member. Another member. There we go. Hi, I joined the co-op several months ago, right? Earlier this year, I would say. And um, uh, Jen and I, we make uh, handmade soaps from suet from local farms, and we sell it at the Shire Co-op. The reason why we joined is we believe in supporting the community and working together. Uh, I believe it makes us more independent and self-sufficient as individuals, and I think that is um, a very important goal for all of us to reach. Um, I really am very excited about it. I can really see it growing and getting like what she was saying about all these different vendors and everybody working together within the community is really crucial. Uh, if it's something that we truly believe in in a free society, this is the way to go about doing it. And that's why I joined. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name's Amy and I am all about uh, connections and creating relationships with other people voluntarily and so Jessica saw me and said, you want to hear about the co-op? And so I said, sure. And I was just hooked. I was like, yes, of course I'm going to join. And I just think it's the greatest idea. It is just the best because the whole connection with food and any other thing you produce and trading and voluntarily and exchanging things that you need for things that you need, I just love it. So thanks to all for you know coming up with an idea because I'm gonna keep trying to help out and make it grow. Thank you guys for participating. Yes, you had a question. So if I'm understanding this correctly, what, what you'll do is you come together and uh, collectively, you know, put your money in a jar, so, so to speak, and you, you buy wholesale from different vendors. Was it uh, Whole Foods in a year? Okay, awesome. So it's, like it's cool money. to know that they're even they're willing to transact in gray, um, gray markets. But uh, after that, Okay. Oh, you, okay. Got it. They actually supply stores. Okay. Cool. And then uh, you know you can. How do y'all decide what to what to order? It's not like it's 
uh, all the money goes into the jar, and then we collectively decide like uh, what to order. But we actually just buy what we like. Um, all you have to have is a $500 minimum. So if you find somewhere like that, I guess there's a lot of different places like UNFI is national. I've heard of a couple others. Um, I don't know what their minimum is, but um, I just order stuff that I like. I like olive products and I like coconut products, so I get that stuff and then he gets his hemp products and he gets his soups and so you collectively have a 500 minute meal. right so I we all get what we like you know I spend like 150 bucks a month and um, you know try to stock up on the stuff especially that's on sale because you get the best deal there and then you'll have your counter economic farmers markets yep. right right and so the day that they deliver or actually the day after that they deliver our wholesale order is the day that we hold the marketplace so we have some people in the co-op that work on that order when it comes in they receive it they sort it out for us and then the next day we hold the marketplace for all the co-op members co -op come and pick up their order visit the market bring stuff to sell if they have any pick up some other stuff that they like from the marketplace um yeah is that actually your question yeah okay if I could uh, just clarify in terms of the collective aspect, uh, members have their own individual accounts. So it's not like if you put in a few hundred dollars, you're paying for her olives or, you know, you're not, you know your, your money goes towards the things you want to order. And anything that left, that's left over is left under your name. And I keep track of it. So it's not it's not literally a collective pool in which nobody you know where the money is for everybody no, but acting collect pulling the money together collectively is the only way that we're able to uh, get these get this wholesaler to do business with us. And the only, frankly, the only way you can uh, get wholesale prices is by buying wholesale. Uh, Associated Buyers, they're located in Barrington, New Hampshire, and they supply most of the food costs in New Hampshire. I don't know if Whole Foods is a specific client of theirs, but... Uh, so they're, they're a white market, they just transacted, right? We haven't told them that we don't exist on paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what they don't know won't hurt them. And, uh, you know, just think of it as uh, collectivist capitalism. Like that. Um, I think we have one of their catalogs back at their our tent or in John's car, but they have a catalog about this thick and really fine print. So, like if you go to a health food store and you see all these items on the shelf there, they have all those listed in the catalog. So we can buy anything that you see in the health food store. We can buy like ten times more than that because the stores don't carry every single item. And uh, what I found in the past was once I figured out which, well, one, one way people told me to uh, try to choose what I want is go to the health food store and buy individual items and try them. And if I like it, if it, you know, there's some things you consume all the time, like olive oil or something. So once you find the brand you like, you can buy ones or you can buy a case of six of them and things like that. So you know how you go in the grocery store and they have all these cardboard cartons ripped open and they're putting things on the shelf. Well, we get the same thing. We can get things by the case lot, and you save a lot of money by buying the case. I think even a, there's a there's a um, wholesale price, and then I think they knock ten percent more off if you buy a whole case of something, something like that. So with associated buyers, the goal is like we're not quite high tech enough yet, but the goal would be to have this all. Uh, software on the web where you would enter it and you could see their catalog and you could check off which items you wanted to buy you could see your total and then each person's order then gets added up into what they call a collated order the whole order that goes in and that order has to equal five hundred dollars or more it's, it's because they they don't want to like deliver one can of soup to somebody hire a driver to drive around so essentially what we're doing is buying food by the pallet load or Probably a little less than that right now, but um, and then they start giving you wholesale prices, and that's how they deliver to the other stores. You know, they deliver a pallet load of stuff to this health food store and a pallet load of stuff to that co-op, and so we end up getting the prices the store gets. And if you don't like paper catalogs, there is this Excel catalog that goes out to each member every month. So. We are in the 21st century, so you don't have to thumb through a paper catalog if you don't want to. 
and also they, they, one of the distributors does a nice website that has all of their items in picture format. You can scroll through and see what they have. And um, any other questions? What do you guys intend to do when the marketplace gets really big, which I would assume it would uh, grab the attention of the state? Do you have a plan for that? Jack does. <laughs> well, one thing to think about is that there's a difference between um, doing things and offering them to the public than if you do it privately as a private club. So we do not sell to the public. So what happens is when you sell to the public, you're regulated by the protectors of the public, which is usually the local government. So um, I know where I grew up, we lived in what was called a dry precinct. You couldn't buy alcohol, but if you were a member of the country club, you could get a, a mixed drink in the bar of the country club. And that's because it's behind the walls of the private. So we're actually private and we invite guests to come to the marketplace. Yeah, and we, we invite the whole community through like the Facebook event pages and all. Um, but it's funny because a lot of people don't really see the bigger vision and they, um, if they're not interested in health food, they, they really don't get it. But so it's important that like we spread this idea of this is like something bigger because uh, you know, they see it when they come here to Pork Fest, but then when I try to talk to them about ordering organic food and stuff, they're like, yeah, I, I eat, you know, TV dinners out of the microwave or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not something we really open up to the public. And so I guess I went off the subject there a little bit, but like the guests that we do invite, I mean, I try to like give away free coffees. I try to have something new happening in every marketplace because I don't think that they get what we're doing. And so, um, it's just, I think it's important that maybe this idea catches on that you can like start to build this voluntary society that we all are interested in obviously because we're here and we've got all these people that have moved here now and how do we get everybody working together? You know, what, what do we do next? Like, okay, so let's buy and sell and trade amongst ourselves. You know, so even if it's not, if you're not, if you're into TV dinners out of the microwave, well, maybe you make jewelry. Like we have one member that does, you know, or soap or whatever it is. So, or we have like a life coach member, we have a member that does kids birthdays parties, he came out to my daughter's birthday last week at Spider-Man, so it's just, it's whatever. Do you guys have any more questions? I got one. You've obviously explained the ins and outs of it, and you've gone over a little bit of how to start one up, and um, I'm just running this through my head, you know, how I would how I would do it back in Austin. But is there any advice that you would give specifically? I mean, like I said, you've already gone over the details, but inspire me. Uh, well, don't file any government applications. <laughs> uh, find an existing co-op and join that and see how they work. You know, learn through what they're doing. And then, um, if you want to do it differently, and you, now you finally know what, what to do and where to buy things, then get together a group of your friends and start your own. So for example, Jessica says she spends $150 a month at the co-op. Most people spend 40 or 50 bucks for a single person for groceries. So if you were to transfer your 150 to 200 a month of grocery purchases over to your own co-op business, it only takes three or four of you to meet the minimum $500 order each month. And what you want to do is get more members than that because somebody will be away or they don't want to order this month or whatever. So in order to get the 500, maybe you need um, 10 members. So then they're all ordering just you know an average of 50 bucks a month each. But the other thing, I mean, sometimes we just say foods, but if you look at their catalog, if you, uh, you can buy uh, Ziploc bags, you can buy trash bags, you can buy toilet paper, paper towels, you can buy shampoo, toothpaste, vitamins. Um, I don't have a ton of stuff, but all the things that you buy at the local grocery store, the market basket here, um, you can't buy from the catalog like fresh cut meats, you know, from like butcher shop or fish or things like that. 
But what you'll find is everything else that's prepackaged, you can buy from yourself at the co-op and just end up going there to, to buy butcher shop products or produce. And then we're, we're bringing on a lot of you know farms so we can get our produce from ourselves too. Awesome. Right, right. And it's like also like this is how it started um, here, like with the ordering of the prepackaged foods from the distributor, but like the main goal is to get as much as you can from each other, and so you could completely bypass that if you have friends that make soap and make laundry detergent and have a service that they can offer, an agorist taxi service, um, somebody that can like come to this event day and cook food or serve coffee or alcohol or whatever it is. Um, you can just do that you know get a group of people together if you have a little space do you have like a, an apartment complex with a courtyard or I don't even know where you could go and do that without getting heat from it yeah so um, and just you know each person produce something and bring that out and start having a community market day and um, hopefully we'll we'll be able to get to a bigger space and do it more than once a month soon can you talk about the minimum you needed to get that access to the, to the situation that requires some type of taxpayer ID or, or how did you get into? No, they just require a hand in order to do a truck delivery. Is it no taxpayer ID or just here's our money, here's a check? Yeah, uh, we filled out some application form, but I think it was more to just put our name and address on record so that when we placed an order, they'd know what address it goes to. I think we can actually order less than that if we go to the warehouse and pick it up and the five hundred dollar minimum was just for a truck delivery so he has he goes on a route and he stops at all of his regular stops you know and he, they fill up the truck the day before um, but yeah i don't remember any taxpayer id i don't think we ever got one we're, we're loosely associated anyway we're not incorporated or anything else like that Well, a lot of times that's for sales tax, but there's no sales tax in New Hampshire. So yeah, in other states, they might want that, I'm not sure. And then a co-op is a recognized form of business, like a proprietorship, LLC, corporation, partnership. A co-op is another status. I think it got recognition in like the 1930s in the U.S. or something like that. And there's a provision in the New Hampshire statutes to form a cooperative corporation. So it describes all that. But we, we have not formed a corporation. We're an unincorporated association, which just means a bunch of people, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, we're not a trust either, but we could do that if we wanted to. Still a trust. Implied, okay, yeah. You could say that if the corporations are a legal fiction, then we are an illegal fiction. <laughs> Any other? Oh. So, I live in northern New Hampshire. Uh, I'm not sure how long I'm going to be there, but I'm just curious for someone who doesn't live in the Manchester area, um, you would have to set up your own thing, or can could you like send in money to the place you want to uh, buy from and have a separate delivery? There may already be a co-op near you. You might have to do a search online. So if, you, um, if you're interested in like ordering wholesale from associated buyers, see if they'll deliver to you, or um, if you have something that you can sell for you and your friends together like once a month, we do it on the third Saturday of the month. Well, um, in very cool. We we had uh, some people ordering that weren't able to do the pickup in Manchester, and so for a little extra gas money, some of our members were were willing to go to places like Peterborough and the Seacoast, you know, to drop off. A particular order for the per for the member who ordered it. So I mean, it's exactly how far, like how many hours from Manchester are you? Stewart Sound, it's like 45 minutes north of here. Oh shit. Okay. Well, I just didn't know if they didn't deliver a separate load. You you'd have to kick in a more than a little uh, gas money, but um, 
you know, if, if, if a member is willing to do it, you know, to, do, to make that delivery for you, I don't see why not. Um, the, the particular people we buy from are in Barrington and their web address is assocbuyers.com so you could just go online it'll probably have a contact number just call them and ask them and what they do is they have a different route that the truck goes for each day of the week so like we're in the Manchester Peterborough you know that area and then there's another day they go to the sea coast and another day they go to Concord and Lakes region so they may have one north of the notch, but I'm not sure. Um, but you could also ask them if there's an already existing co-op in your area, and that's probably the best thing to do is join one that already exists. Even if it doesn't do everything that you want it to, at least you can learn about co-oping, running a, running a, basically you're running a business together. You, you know, volunteer for a task, even if it's like cleaning up the hall after the, uh, the event's over and after a while you become something like a master orderer like this guy or a treasurer like that guy or a marketing manager like her. Um, and also there's some open source co-op software out there that we've looked at. We just haven't settled on anything yet but there's this package that allows, uh, if you're a producer member, it allows you to list your products for sale like you're creating an online store. And then if you're a consumer member, you could look at all the items that were for sale. If you have a big distributor like that one, you could enter their whole catalog and view that for sale. And then you just, you know, like if I'm, if I'm producing eggs and I think I'm going to have eight dozen eggs for the next Friday and the Friday's the day we get together, I could list the eight dozen eggs and he could buy two of them and you could buy one and it would check off there so I'd know when they were all sold. So there's some pretty good stuff. And this software also does some of the accounting and it keeps track of different people who are going to drive different places to pick up stuff. It's, it looks really good. We just have to, that's more work that we have to do setting it up as a business. Right now it's all pencil and paper kind of stuff, or actually computer. But. All right, I think we have time for one more question that we have to wrap it up. Okay. It's called something like localfoodcoop.com, but I think they changed their name. So if you just did a search on open source co-op software, it would point you to them. They're one of the top search items. And you don't have to wait until that stuff all gets set up. Like We are still, like you said, pencil and paper. So if you've got some friends that want to order some stuff at a wholesale, you get in touch with a distributor. If you have some friends that make stuff or have some plants growing in their kitchen and can bring some stuff to buy, sell, trade amongst you guys, that's all you need. Well, thank you guys for coming. Yeah.